murder of two New York City police officers in the strongest terms, flat out calling it an assassination. New York City officials just released new information about their deaths and about the gunman who killed himself. There's huge concern right now about the safety of police officers nationwide. Some big city departments are on alert. They are ordering new security precautions. The congressman who represents the Brooklyn area where the two officers were killed is standing by. There he is along with our correspondents, our analysts. We're covering all the stories, the breaking news happening right now. First, let's get the very latest. Let's go to CNN's Martin Savage. He's on the streets of Brooklyn joining us uh, right now. Martin. Wolf, as you point out, behind us here there is this memorial. It continues to grow. New Yorkers here are still in shock, still in mourning, and many felt they had to come here in person just to see this site for themselves. Alerts, as you say, have gone out nationwide, but many are also struck not just by the violence here, but the question, could it happen somewhere else? And they're reminded how divided the leadership of this city is. Here's what we found. Moments after murder, this cell phone video shot from a Brooklyn balcony looks down on a street, capturing the frantic effort Saturday afternoon to try to save the lives of two New York police officers shot as they sat in their patrol car. One's already in an ambulance, another wheeled across the stunned and shut down street. Less than a block away, at a subway station, suspected shooter Ismail Brinsley kills himself as police close in. At the hospital, officers Rafael Ramos and Wen Jian Lu both die. The result of what authorities say was an ambush. This was a cold-blooded assassination like we haven't seen before. The gunfire had barely subsided before the finger-pointing began, exposing to a nation what New Yorkers already knew. A deep and bitter divide exists between New York Mayor Bill de Blasio and New York's police force. As the mayor walked through the hospital after just meeting with the families of the dead patrolmen, New York's finest could be seen turning their backs moments before he addressed a shock city. The head of one New York's police union blamed the mayor directly. There's blood on many hands tonight. That blood on the hands starts on the steps of City Hall in the office of the mayor. Put aside protests, put aside demonstrations. Until these funerals are passed, let's focus just on these families and what they have lost. Today, the mayor called for an end to protests after his police commissioner said the killings may have been linked. It's quite apparent, quite obvious, that uh, the targeting of these two police officers was a direct uh, spin-off of this, of, this, of this issue of these demonstrations. On social media, suspect Brinsley commented on the deaths of Michael Brown and Eric Garner after grand juries in New York and Missouri decided not to bring criminal charges against authorities for their killings. He wrote, I'm putting wings on pigs today. They take one of ours, let's take two of theirs. Brinsley made that post even as he drove from Baltimore bound for Brooklyn Saturday after earlier shooting his ex-girlfriend. Baltimore authorities tried to warn New York police of the potential danger, following Brinsley by his cell phone, even transmitting this wanted poster with his picture. In New York, the warning was about to go out when reports of the shooting came in. There continues to be vigils that are held throughout the city. There is one that is going on right now. But there's also talk of protests, similar to the ones that were seen in the weeks leading up. Despite the mayor's request for a moratorium, it remains to be seen that that will actually be honored. Meanwhile, the first funeral for the fallen officer is expected to take place this Saturday. Well, Martin Savage there.